Okay, boys and girls, uh, we got a great story today. We're in the life of Daniel. And Daniel met with a man that did not listen to God. In fact, our memory verse today comes from Daniel chapter 4, and it says, Them that walk in pride, he is able to abase. In other words, those people who walk in pride, they don't think they need God. They think they're so great. God is able to bring them low. And this man walked in pride, and God brought him low. And it's a great warning to you and to me not to think too highly of ourselves, but to walk humbly before God and honor him. Let's start with a word of prayer. Dear Father, thank you so much for how good you've been to us. Thank you for your word that teaches us that we had better walk humbly with you and listen to your, your word. I pray for the boys and girls listening to my voice that you would really help them to do what's right and to honor you before it's too late. And while our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, why don't you pray and say, Dear God, please speak to me. Help me to listen and help me to obey. And dear God, that is our prayer every single time we come to your word, that you would speak to our hearts, that we would listen and we would obey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, the man we're talking about today, his name is Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar was a mighty and powerful king. In fact, he had conquered all the civilized nations of his day. Um, he had besieged Jerusalem, where God's people were, several times. He had taken captive thousands of people, and he had, the last time he was um, attacking Jerusalem, he had destroyed the beautiful city of Jerusalem, and he had destroyed the temple the, that God's people had made. Nebuchadnezzar was rich. He was successful. He was wealthy. He had everything you could imagine except for what he really needed. Nebuchadnezzar did not know God. Now, he's going to learn about God, but he does not know God. And it's the one thing that he needs more than anything else. Now, by the time we get to our story today, he's finished his military campaigns. He's conquered every nation he could conquer. He is one of the most powerful dictators, kings, that has ever, ever lived. And he is now seeking to beautify the city of Babylon. He wants it to be one of the um, most beautiful cities in all the world. It's one of his goals. Well, Nebuchadnezzar had taken captive, as we've talked about before, four of the Hebrew children. He taught, taken captive a lot of them, but these four especially stood out. They were the ones that had purposed in their heart to do what's right, no matter what. And King Nebuchadnezzar admired them, and he honored them, and he saw that they were very, very wise. If you remember, King Nebuchadnezzar had had a dream, and he called for the rulers of the, um, of the kingdom, his wise men, his magicians, his soothsayers, people like that. And those people could not help him. And then he brought Daniel in. And Daniel told him what his dream meant. Now through that, King Nebuchadnezzar um, acknowledged that their God was the God of gods and the Lord of lords. He realized because they could tell, Daniel could tell in the dream, that Daniel understood and knew the true God. Well, <clears throat> you remember that he didn't learn from that lesson. Even though he knew that God in heaven was the true God, he didn't honor him. In fact, he went on to build that statue, and he wanted to be worshipped himself as a God, lowercase god. And um, <clears throat> when the three Hebrew children would not worship him. They were thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. And God sent his angel and delivered them. And remember at that point, King Nebuchadnezzar said, your God is the true God. No God is able to deliver 
like this God can deliver. Well, Nebuchadnezzar still, even though he knew that God was the true God, he still didn't honor him as God. So God had given him already now three really good chances. He had seen with Daniel and his friends what you really meant to follow the Lord. He had seen when Daniel, uh, um, excuse me, when Daniel told him what the dream meant, that God was, could read his thoughts and, and, and knew who he knew that God was the real God. And he had seen when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood up and did what's right, that no God could deliver after this sort. But he still did not honor the Lord. And he had another dream. God is trying to get his attention. God is trying to get him to, to commit his heart and life to God. It is not enough to know about God in your head. You have to uh, give your heart and life to the Lord. It has to really change you. Well, he had a dream and he didn't know what it meant. And so once again, he went to the world to get help. He went to the magicians and the astrologers and the soothsayers. And of course, they were no help at all. So um, he calls in Daniel. And Daniel comes before the king. And Daniel, he wants Daniel to tell him the dream. And so uh, tell him what the dream means. And so uh, he comes and he brings Daniel before him. And he says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, have had a dream in my house. I was flourishing. Everything was going well for me. And I had a dream which astonished me, and it made me tremble. And he tells him what the dream was. He said, um, and I'm reading a lot of this right from the Bible to you because it's so very, very good. And he called Daniel before him, and he said, <clears throat> this was the vision in my head. This is what I saw. I saw a tree in the midst of the earth whose height was great, and the tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the ends of the earth. Now think about that. And um, the leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof was much, and it was meat for all. And the beast of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt therein, and from the branches all flesh was fed and then all of a sudden in my dream I heard a voice from heaven and it said hew the tree down cut it down and cut the branches off and scatter the leaves and the fruit and the birds that are living in the branches nevertheless leave a stump and let there be a brand of iron and brass around the stump. And then it said, and let the heart be changed from man's and let a beast hearts be given unto it and let seven times pass over. And it says, to the intent that the living may know that the most high God ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it who pleaseth him. Well, he says, Daniel, what do you think this means? And the Bible says that Daniel was astonished for one hour. And he realized what the dream meant, but he didn't want to tell the king because he didn't want to hurt the king's feelings and he didn't want the king to be mad at him. And he said to the king, Oh, king, let the dream be to those that hate you and let the, the meaning of the dream be to your enemies. And... Uh, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, said, tell me what the dream means. And Daniel said, the tree which you saw, which grew and its height was to heaven and its branches reached all over the earth, the tree, O king, is you. You're that tree. Well, we can see that because Nebuchadnezzar had captured all the known kingdoms of the day. His influence reached far and wide. His branches and leaves spread over all the earth. They were dependent on him for food. They lived under him for shelter. He said, you king are the tree and God is not pleased with you. And God's going to send his angel and cut down your kingdom. And he's going to leave a stump 
with brass and iron around it. And he's going to let you be like an animal. And you're going to lose your reasoning. For seven years, you're going to lose your reasoning and you're going to be like an animal. The tree, O king, is you. And he said, I want to give you some advice, king. You need to turn from your sins. And back in those days, kings were very, very cruel and merciless to other people. He says, you need to quit doing what's wrong. And you need to do what's right. And then maybe this dream won't come to pass. God is warning you. You know, boys and girls, God warns us all the time. Sometimes he warns us through our teachers. Sometimes he warns us through our parents. Sometimes he even warns us through our friends. And when we don't listen to the warning of God, judgment comes. Well, Nebuchadnezzar did what most people do with the warnings of God. I hope you don't do this. But you know what he did? Nebuchadnezzar, after hearing the warning of God, he went right on with life. He started continuing to build this beautiful kingdom of Babylon. He had hanging gardens all over the kingdom. It was a beautiful kingdom. Sometimes the gardens were like huge mountains. The, uh, it says that in history that this, this, um, these Babylonian mountains were, um, were like the um, seven wonders of the world. They were so gorgeous. He went through all the kingdom, making it so beautiful. I imagine every now and then he thought about the dream. I imagine he heard that voice saying, cut it down. And I imagine every now and then he heard Daniel say, King, you need to stop sinning against God. You need to get your heart right with God. You need to listen to God's word. But he was too busy for that. He didn't want to think about that. He'd rather just go about his day-by-day -day business. And then at the end of 12 months, 12 months, the Bible says, that's one year, a whole year God gave him to repent. A whole year that God allowed him to have chance after chance after chance to listen. A whole year he had opportunity. The Bible says he walked into the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. And the king spake. And he's up there and he's looking over the palace. And he says, is not this great Babylon that I have built? No thanks to God. No giving of glory to God. He says, this is the kingdom that I have built. And notice what he says. For the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. And the Bible says, while the word was yet in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. And all of a sudden, Nebuchadnezzar, this great king, all of a sudden his eyes probably just started glaring out. His, his, his mouth must have contorted and started drooling. And his mind went from him. And his mind became like an animal. And the guards came and the king had suddenly, mysteriously, his mind had left him. And they had to drive him out. And maybe they kept him in the gardens amongst all the other animals. For seven years, that king was like a wild beast. The Bible says that his nails grew out like claws. He was wet with the dew of heaven. His beard and his hair grew long and matty and filthy, and he lived like an animal for seven years. And after the seven years were over, the Bible says that his reason was restored to him, and he realized what he had been doing. He realized that he had not been honoring God, and that he had been uh, disciplined for his poor behavior and that God had not been pleased with him. And at the end of that time, Nebuchadnezzar said, I want to call everybody together and I want you to know that there is one true God. And he said that I want to honor him and glorify him. No longer did 
King Nebuchadnezzar want to say, this is the kingdom that I have built and I am the greatest and I am the most wonderful. He said, no, this is the God who built this kingdom. This is the God who's allowed me to serve. This is the God that's worth everybody praising. And he said, all his works are true and all his ways are judgment. And he says, those that walk in pride, God will bring them low. And he said, I have walked in pride and God has brought me low and I don't ever want to do that again. And from what we can understand, Nebuchadnezzar at this point becomes a true follower of the living God. He has realized it's not enough just to look at other people and say, wow, they really know the Lord. It's not enough to look at other people and say, wow, their God can do incredible things. It's not enough to look at other people and say, there is no God that can deliver out of this sort. He can't spend his whole life looking at other people's gods. He needs to say, this is my Lord and my God, and I am going to follow him. Now, Nebuchadnezzar had to be brought very low before he listened to God. I know boys and girls like that. They don't listen until they get into trouble. Wise is the person who says, I'm going to follow God and I'm going to do what's right no matter what. And I hope that's what you're like. I hope that you will learn to follow God no matter what and that you won't wait until God brings you low to listen to him. You'll listen to him because it's the right thing to do. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for these boys and girls listening to my ear, uh, listening to my words. I pray that you would help them to walk with you, to listen to you, and to learn that you are the God of gods. No God is able to deliver like you can. And help us to realize it is not enough to know about you in our heads. We have to turn from our sins and put our trust and faith in Jesus Christ who loved us and died for us. And we need to walk with you each and every day. I pray that you would help us not wait until trouble comes into our life to listen to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, be like Daniel and learn from your mistakes before he brings you love. Have a great day.